Hey guys, what's up? Now, this one is really cool to me. This is the Glorious Model O wireless mouse, and it's the larger one. There is a smaller one that's the Model O wireless with a, like a minus sign next to it, and it's a slightly smaller mouse. We'll go over that more at the end of this. I want to quickly read some of my write-up here and kind of go over some thoughts. I know some people are going to want to hear what the buttons sound like, so before I go too far, we'll stop here. These are the switches and what they sound like. These are the Omron 20 million clicks. If you get the smaller Model O wireless, one with a little hyphen negative sign next to it, those are 80 million click kale switches. couple other things to point out too. We'll talk about the buttons real quick. Left and right click. Obviously the scroll wheel can be depressed. There's a DPI button right behind the scroll wheel. If you flip the mouse over, you'll see the DPI lights that indicate and they should correlate with your software to tell you what color is what DPI setting. So if you needed to quickly pick it up, turn it over, look, set it back down, you can do that. Left and right clicks as well, your forward and back buttons or reassignable to whatever you want them to be. I almost forgot to say, of all things that really kind of took me to was the scroll wheel of this mouse. It is probably one of the most uh, undermentioned things. It's got very distinct bumps that are very tactile feeling bumps. It also has such a neat ridge design that it's just really easy to use that scroll wheel. The RGB zone lighting appears to be one zone lighting. So you have RGB that goes down the sides of the mouse. The scroll wheel itself has an RGB wheel in it. And the inside of the mouse underneath the honeycomb design you can see the RGB lights in there as well so it's pretty evenly lit and it looks really nice now in short how this adventure started I wanted some unlooped switches for a custom keyboard I'm making and well I'm pretty reckless so I just kind of bought whatever popped up first which happened to be by glorious so to save you some too long didn't read didn't want to watch all this uh, pretty much what it comes down to is I checked out their website and I read the, a couple of excerpts on there that I thought well that that really sounds like it speaks to me personally and it's something I wanted to look into they say and this is in quotes our story begins 2014 with with a diehard PC gamer who saw a big problem. And then I skip ahead a little bit. The only gaming gear available was often outrageously high priced and questionable quality. I agree with that. Not to mention complicated to choose. I also agree with that. There's a lot of bloat on the market out there. Okay, well let me go look at your offerings. I want to see what you have. So enter looking at the glorious Model O wireless mouse. A mouse that is pretty competitively priced at a higher point in my opinion. So I'm thinking oh, something like the Aerox 3, which I also own, would be something that's similar in price to the Model O wireless. And how good could this mouse be in comparison to the Aerox 3? A little bit more reading about the mouse before I made the purchase and I did ask people, do you think I should get this mouse? And nobody answered within the five minutes that I decided for myself, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get it. What can I say? Because I'm reckless. So anyways, the, the mouse sensor, they use something called the BAMP sensor, which I, I can assume what that stands for. I'm sure you can too. And the specs on it sort of read similar to the 3370 by Pixar. Well, it is a collaboration effort with Pixar to make a mouse that has low power draw, high efficiency, and ultimately should be pretty good. And the reason it kind of screamed that sensor to me is it's 400 ips tracking speed, 19,000 DPI, and up to 1,000 hertz polling, which is on the surface level, which that could be a couple things, but on the surface level, 3370 is what it sounds like. So potentially a modified version of that, and there may be better information out there that somebody could tell you, uh, well, it's actually going to be closer to this. Either way, it's a collaboration effort between Glorious and Pixar to make a custom kind of sensor. You see this a lot with a lot of companies. Corsair, for instance, will do that a lot with Pixar. Logitech. They come up with a custom sensor that what they think works best for people. The BAMP sensor in this mouse compared to something like the Aerox 3, which is potentially based on the modified PAW 3335, there's definitely something noticeable there where this BAMP sensor is much more enjoyable to use. But my biggest concern was going to be, was this just some overpriced competitor that I've never really heard of trying to come out here and, and compete with Logitech and Corsair and SteelSeries and the companies that have been making these mice for a long time on the middle to higher end scales. As soon as I got this thing out of the box and plugged it up and I already had a healthy dose of skepticism in my system, uh, I can tell you right away that buyer's remorse, the skepticism, it all just started to kind of melt away immediately. The sturdy construction and the lightweight feel, the skates, the tracking, the accuracy, the snappiness of line drawing, uh, it was just buttery smooth feeling and it was amazingly comfortable right away right out of the box everything from the construction quality and feel of the mouse 
to just its performance um, without even using the software at this point. I remember thinking, man, I, I was I was ready to be like, how good could it be? It, it can be that good, apparently. And uh, I'm, I was ecstatic about it. So, of course, after playing with it, I had to put the software on there and check it out. Now, there's a lot of basic stuff in the software, all the things that you would expect to be able to do, like control lighting zones and such, and pick your, your RGB if that's what you're interested into. You can go in there and do that pretty easily. You can set up uh, button assignments. Uh, you can change your DPI. We see this in a lot of UIs. But there were some things in here that I find less common or non-existent in a lot of those UI suites that I thought was fantastic. The software lets you adjust things like uh, debounce. You can adjust the debounce. You can also adjust, and this is important to me, liftoff. You can tell the mouse how sensitive you want that sensor to be for liftoff. So if you're somebody that does jump turns, uh, any kind of spin move action, you'll be able to do that or adjust and find a sweet spot to do that. And that is just one of the coolest things I think I've seen in any kind of mouse uh, software UI package. Other thoughtful inclusions too, because I, I had, had seen that there were some concerns about the mouse doesn't go to sleep and therefore the RGB lights stay on in wireless mode and it might die. You can go in there and change when that mouse goes to sleep. I've got mine set to one minute and the wake up time from that one minute, it's, it's a noticeable, very minute delay, but it's, it's, it's almost like effortlessly comes to life. So you might move for just a second and then it comes back to life. Having the ability to set the power option in there so that it's a lower amount of time before it goes to sleep, that, that's pretty awesome. And I, I've got to say that, that it's really nice to feel like I have so much control over this mouse. The battery does last up to 71 hours or 71 plus hours if you're not using the lighting functions. So another cool thing you can do also is either have it go no lights when it's in wireless mode and lights when it's in wired mode. And what I mean by that is once you've unplugged it, it'll go lights off and that way you have extended battery life from no lights using battery to plugging it in and it just remembering that, okay, now you're plugged in, you want the lights on. You can also set it vice versa or have it so that it's no lights all the time or full lights, max brightness, but you have the ability to change that. So the battery life to me compared to some other mice feels a little on the light end. And I imagine if they were to put a bigger battery in there, that would change some of the awesomeness of the weight of the mouse. Each one of the switches is crisp and gratifying, satisfying, depression to actuation is fantastic. I love the way it feels just to use the mouse and click on things. There's no real mush to it and there's been some mushy mice in the past but there's no real mush here when I'm using this mouse. It does come with an extremely lightweight braided cable which makes it feel wireless even when it's plugged in. If you want to be in wireless mode and really kind of extend your distance or, or decrease the distance between where the dongle is and you don't want to plug it right into the USB in the back of the PC, there is a little brick that can plug right into the USB-C cable and then you can plug your dongle into that so that it can be literally just a few inches away from the mouse while you're wireless. This also makes it pretty easy to take the USB cable out of said brick and then just plug it into your mouse when you need to charge. That's my setup anyways. This is not a new thing. We've seen this with a lot of different mice that they'll have the ability to extend your dongle to limit the distance between signal transmission and receipt, but it's great that it's added here as well. I don't personally have issues dragging. I actually found out after I got this that uh, a buddy has it and he doesn't like the cable as much. Uh, he would prefer something with a little more stiffness, not as stiff as some things, but maybe not something so, so loose and lightweight. The honeycomb design, the construction of it, it's all super durable quality. The skates on the bottom, they feel like they're just a step above typical skates we see on most mice. I, I, I can't say enough just how nice it feels. It feels like really sturdy super lightweight, amazing tracking, wonderful in the hand, sounds kind of dirty, just a great solid mouse. And especially now that I compare it to the SteelSeries Aerox 3, it, it's like the SteelSeries Aerox 3 just doesn't belong anymore or that it's severely overpriced in comparison. So uh, getting what you pay for here from a company that really seems to try to aim to give you exactly what you expect. So you must have some gripes about it, right? Yeah, I got a few. Uh, they're gonna sound like petulant whininess and uh, they're far outweighed by the sheer greatness that the mouse has had to offer. With an exposed chassis and the price, I would have kind of expected to see a vapor barrier inside, something to help uh, protect the PCB and components inside against dust, particulate, spills. Um, that would have been nice to see. That is something we see in the Aerox 3, that they have a vapor barrier on there to help protect the innards of the mouse, especially something that exposed. And another one is not really a gripe for me because I agree with the choice to not have Bluetooth on the mouse, but there are going to be some people that want to be able to use the Bluetooth function. And while using Bluetooth, the game should always be a big no-no. It would be nice to have the ability to pull the mouse out and have it Bluetooth for just everyday computing on the go to make it really kind of that mobile mouse feel without having to plug in a dongle or, or a cable. Bluetooth missing or being lacking here is going to bother some people probably. And that is something the Aerox 3 offers, but it's a miserable experience when you try to game or do anything that you require some real accuracy with. Using Bluetooth is, is just not the way to go, in my opinion. I know some people will want it to have had Bluetooth, and then I'm the one that's going to be like, I'm glad you didn't put Bluetooth 
in this mouse. So the Monolo wireless one that I have is 128 millimeter length, 38 millimeter height, weighing in at 69 grams. It's the larger of the two, but still doesn't feel overly large. Now I have a pretty large hand. There is a smaller Model O, which has the minus sign next to it, so Model O minus sign. That one is 120 millimeters in length, 35 millimeter height, and 65 grams. Just slightly lighter, but I, I probably couldn't tell you that there's any noticeable difference between the two. And while I'm sure there's a lot of information out there, a lot of great things to read, and a lot of great things to go look at, hopefully this told you something. I, I just I felt compelled to share because I, it was really kind of a, how good could this be? I don't believe you, and and uh, I'm converted. I'm a believer in this mouse. And again, I've never heard anything about this company until I was looking for linear switches for a keyboard I'm building, and they just popped up. And uh, I don't know. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on some more stuff that comes out from Glorious and the PC gaming race. Anyways, you guys have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do.